Good morning. Uh, welcome to the School of Arts uh, Undergraduate Open Day webinar. Uh, my name is Crispin Brownfoot and I'm joined here by two of my colleagues from the School of Arts at SIAS this morning, Angela Enpi and Polly Savage. And we want to talk a bit about uh, the School of Arts at SIAS, the particular SIAS approaches to studying the arts and the degrees that, that our department uh, convenes. And we want to just have a bit of a discussion about, you know, why the arts matter, why study the arts. And so before we, we start off to consider some of the, uh, the sort of important questions, challenges and interests of studying the arts at SOAS and more generally, I just want to introduce myself and my colleagues. As I said, my name is Crispin Brownfoot. I'm a lecturer in South Asian art at uh, SOAS. I'm also the director of learning and teaching in the department. I have particular interests in, in India, in South Asia, and uh, I'm one of uh, multiple regional specialists uh, across the department working on aspects of, of Asia and Africa. Angela. You're muted, Angela. Turn that off. Angela MP, um, a professor of ethnomusicology. Um, so I'm in the music unit. Uh, my regional specialism is Southern and Eastern Africa. Um, I have particular interests in public sector ethnomusicology, or what we refer to in, in our unit as music and development. Um, and it's an area where we particularly exploring issues around uh, music and environment, um, music and uh, migration and refugees. Um, uh, we have a, a department of about five people, um, and all of them have very special uh, regional specialisms. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Polly. Thanks, Crispin. So I'm Polly Savage. I'm a lecturer in the uh, History of Art of Africa. Um, and I'm also the convener for the BA Creative Arts Programme, um, which we'll talk about a bit more in a moment. But um, my specialism uh, is the contemporary arts of Africa, um, really from the Cold War period onwards. And I'm particularly interested in processes of uh, liberation and decolonization. Uh, and I focus in particular on, on Lusophone Africa, so Portuguese speaking Africa. Great. Now, School of Arts, and indeed SAS so more widely, is, is striking in Britain uh, because we're specialists in Asia and Africa. We're, you know, everyone at SAS is looking at the world from an Asian and African perspective. And indeed, you know, the, the majority of the world's population are living in these regions. So we're taking a decentered approach to the study of the arts. We may be studying the history of art, music, the creative arts and industries uh, from within London but we're taking a global perspective to these. And often the view we're taking on these subjects is from, uh, from Mombasa, from Hanoi, from Seoul, from Leh, from Chennai. We're looking at a variety of issues, global issues, global issues in the arts of music, the creative arts, the creative industries, as well as issues related to museums and heritage and development as they uh, relate to the tangible and the intangible arts. Many of these issues come up daily in, in newspapers and in the media more broadly. Questions that we're engaged with in uh, our undergraduate degrees and our, our graduates take forward into employment later on. I want to talk about some of these issues and consider amongst ourselves, you know, why we think the arts matter, whether we're looking at the historic parts of the past, where we're looking at the sort of the accumulation of uh, tangible heritage in Asia and Africa that we may study as art historians, uh, the great monuments of, of Asia and Africa, the built environment, the urban landscapes, as well as tangible objects that may move around, whether it be uh, Chinese ceramics or Indian paintings or uh, bronze casting from West Africa or uh, calligraphy from the Middle East. Some of these uh, materials are, are historic and we are a great center for the study of these, these historic materials. But we're also looking at contemporary issues contemporary issues for the production and use of art, music, and other creative uh, arts. 
but also we're looking at contemporary issues of how uh, world heritage can be studied, displayed, collected, curated. So we span the historic, but also the contemporary in our studies. And we are engaged with broader issues and questions about it, as well as detailed analysis of, of objects. Some of our uh, students are also uh, creative students in the sense of either uh, creative presentations or indeed for our music students, as Angela well knows, they come to SOAS in order not only to study music, but actually to, uh, to learn to perform in new uh, aspects of musical performance. So Angela, perhaps we could start with you. Why do you think the arts matter? What what's matters to you? Why, why should students be engaged with tangible and intangible heritage, music and development? Well, there are so many, many reasons. I think looking at the world as it is today, we see a world that is quite segregated. We see a world where certain voices are heard and others are marginalized. And I think the arts helps to bring a kind of humanity or human element into this conversation. Um, learning music from elsewhere in the world helps us to understand uh, people who may not be very well known through a kind of creative practice. Uh, we learn about a people, we learn about their uh, social and political context, we learn about gender issues, we learn about how they represent themselves, and all of these through performance, through symbolic practice, which opens our eyes to a whole range of other things. Um, the music in our music unit, that definitely is kind of one of our um, uh, kind of our, our specialist areas, and that is through creating a kind of creative empathy, if you like, um, we learn about a people and their context. So it's not just the not just the performance, but it's the whole context of who people are, how they represent themselves in the world, and what their interests and needs are. And often these are issues that are marginalized or silenced by politics, by gender, um, and by a range of other things. So I think the arts are a very, very important way of lifting up and looking under, if you like, um, to see really who people are and how they represent themselves and how they have experienced their histories, um, what makes them flourish, what, what are their aspirations. Um, we see with the Black Lives Matter movement more recently how presenting um, them, presenting oneself creatively in a very powerful way helps us to really understand people's struggles and their aspirations and to try and rectify inequalities in the world. Mm. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. It's an exciting period too for studying mm. the arts. Polly, why do you think the arts matter? Why do they matter to you? Why do they matter in the way you approach things? And how, how can we engage students in these, in these important, vital and urgent issues? Yeah, I mean, it's such an important question at the moment, isn't it? And for, I'm sure for everyone who's tuning in, it's a question that you're thinking as you're choosing your degrees, you're thinking, you know, what's the best path to take and what's going to be the most kind of useful path to take and what's going to well, does that open up your, your mind, your world, you know, this is what university should do. And I would say that, you know, studying the arts, it really opens up other universes. I think this is why it's so important. It opens up other ways of thinking. So it creates a space where, you know, difficult questions can be asked. It creates a space for critical thinking. And that's why sometimes it makes people uncomfortable because, um, you know, these difficult questions that don't get asked anywhere else can be explored through the arts. Um, John Ruskin says art shows us what it is to be human. And I think that's such a such a wonderful quote that really for me summarizes why why the arts are so important because it's art, history of art is not just about art it's about history it's about politics it's about philosophy it's about what makes us a society what makes us a world so you know if you think about objects you know in a sense we're not just talking about objects we take for example the, the toppling of the statue of Edward Colston or uh, the requests to return the objects that have been looted from Benin by, by the British Empire. You know, these actions, they really matter in fundamental ways, not just because of the objects, but because these objects stand for something really much larger. They offer, they offer 
kind of events, uh, evidence for events and relationships in the past that that require rethinking. Um, you know, they they kind of connect us to histories that need to be confronted. And so that's why, you know, they really do matter. It's not just about kind of looking at looking at pictures. It's really about kind of how we understand ourselves in relation to the past and how we might imagine our futures. So mm-hmm. it, they really do matter. Mm-hmm. Indeed. And I mean, you know, both of you have drawn attention to the importance of thinking, you know, beyond the object, beyond the performance, to the larger uh, social, political, uh, environmental context in which our uh, objects, performances are created, used, consumed, and indeed circulated. I mean, Polly, you raise the important issue of, of, of restitution, of the ways in which uh, objects from one region have circulated to other regions and now appear, uh, whether in, in publications or on the internet, or indeed placed in new contexts such as museums. And so um, a larger issue about, about the arts is not just the, the study of the arts to, to you know, understand why paintings were produced and used by certain peoples in, in China in the 11th and 12th centuries in a particular court culture, or Mughal India in the 17th century, or indeed in, in Southern Africa today, but also about the ways in which those objects have been Uh, consumed, circulated, migrated to other regions and how this raises indeed important uh, social and indeed political issues about uh, peoples, nations, communities, identities today. Mm. I think of the sort of aspects that that our SOAS students uh, are, are engaged with often provocatively and argumentatively about, you know, how has our how have our disciplines been constructed? You know, what is the role of colonialism and uh, Western imperialism in not only uh, 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 dominating certain areas of the world politically, but also the ways in which uh, that uh, colonialism, imperialism has had an impact on the ways in which academic disciplines themselves are constructed and disseminated the way in which art history, as an example, uh, was developed over the course of the 19th century, you know, in a colonially expansionist period. And so the perspectives one might take to sort of important question of what is art, how can art be understood, are often from, you know, implicitly from a Western Eurocentric perspective. And it's these kind of issues that, that we can challenge at science to say, Maybe we need to look at some of these questions about, you know, what is art? Why are are objects circulating around the world? How are uh, artworks presented in different ways, in galleries, in museums, in uh, international biennales? How, who gets to present these? And how are these objects presented? How are peoples and societies represented and displayed to other worlds? Who gets to decide? And so these are all important political issues. And I think that's the the sort of exciting thing in a way that we're we're looking at at people, people on the ground, people doing things in the past and indeed the present. And we're engaging with important issues of, of you know, people's actions, people's lives, but through the study of objects, of performances, of mm-hmm. spaces. I think this is a, it really is a very particular important moment in history for these kinds of conversations. And one of the things I'll add to what you were saying, Crispin, is the importance of um, uh, really critiquing the idea that proper knowledge is knowledge which is written and spoken. And the many, many places in the world where really important things can only be expressed through song, through ritual, through the body. Um, and one of the things that we really look at in our uh, as a school of arts and in our music program is how do we listen in culturally appropriate ways? How do we change our listening practice so that we can um, give credibility to different ways that 
that people communicate their interests and their needs in the world. So one of the areas, for instance, is looking at peace building, international peace building, which often is, is um, controlled by certain protocols that are, have been devised and formulated by a Western judicial system. But in a place like South Sudan, where I work, when people want to say something that is truthful and quite hard hitting um, and important, they sing songs to each other. Um, the West doesn't understand the credibility of that, those songs as real knowledge, as real proper information. So what we try to do at SOAS is to flip the way we understand these things and say music matters in a range of different ways and often in highly political and highly um, uh, uh, relevant authorita authoritative ways. Um, so we need to l start listening differently in the world today. Mm, indeed. Mm -hmm. And I, I think too, in in uh, uh, many parts of Asia, uh, knowledge, religious knowledge, often, you know, the centrality of, of, of the transmission of tradition, of traditions of religious knowledge and indeed artistic knowledge, uh, is carried on through through practice, through performance. Yeah. That that knowledge is transmitted uh, orally, whether orally through the spoken word or, as you say, orally by listening. Mm -hmm. so that's. Uh, you know the the emphasis we might place in or has been placed in in uh european culture on the importance of the written world with written word uh isn't as important when when objects performances listening recitation matters so much more yeah, much. in the way in which uh knowledge and ideas uh and and heritage uh is transmitted in in these regions mm -hmm. you know from your perspective Polly. Um, you know, where do where do you see the role of the arts in in, in particularly in your in your own uh, areas of it, research? Um, well, I mean, I think you know if we if we think about the arts as a way of it's obviously it's a form of communication, isn't it? It's a hmm. form of of creating a connection, and you know if we look historically at you know the way that this you know, different forms of art, different forms of art have been used to create those connections. I think, you know, it offers us the possibility to really look at the world in new ways and to open up, you know, much more global perspectives. And I think that's what's so special about what we do at SOAS is that, you know, in, in other institutions, you know, the history of arts is really the history of Europe and the history of North America, you know, primarily. And once you start looking at this from a global perspective, then it really opens up the possibility to understand the world in new ways and to think about what connects us as people. So to think about other ways of thinking, but also to think about what, what unites us and what brings us together. So that's an incredibly powerful thing and it's quite transformative. I mean, I, you know, I came to SOAS as a student and, and it completely changed, it completely changed the way I thought about the world, completely changed the way I understood the world because of that, you know. Mm -hmm. Indeed, I mean, SOAS is, is, is a special, it's an unusual place, you know, where we're studying disciplines that you can study elsewhere uh, in Britain or indeed in the world, but, you know, we're taking a, a different perspective on, on these things. So, you know, the degrees that we offer in, in the, the School of Arts, you know, we offer a degree in, in BA History of Art, it is history of art. You can study history of art in many other places, but the history of art you study at SOAS is uh, a disciplinary foundation in, uh, in history of art, learning about uh, how to study objects, perhaps looking at the, the media and technologies of art, but also looking at questions of how has history of art as a discipline been constructed, particularly for Asia and Africa. Our examples may be uh, Asian and African, but the perspectives on art are, are global, are more, much more broader. So even when our examples are, are Indian or, or African or East Asian, when we're examining uh, questions of what is art or other broader, of how can the history of art uh, be studied, how can it be pursued as a discipline? Our examples may be being throughout Asia and Africa, but they're, they're questions that all art historians are engaged with. 
We also have a degree uh, run jointly with uh, UCL, uh, our near neighbour here in the centre of London, at the heart of London, with so many of the rich museum collections, which include material from Asia and Africa, as well as, of course, Europe. And some students wish to combine the study of Asian and African art with a European perspective. We also offer a degree uh, of which uh, Polly Savage is the current convener, a BA in Creative Arts and Cultural Industries. We also offer joint degrees in uh, history of art and another subject such as social anthropology or history, um, and indeed music with these subjects. Music can be studied as a joint degree with other subjects, and also uh, music within the creative arts and cultural industries. I'll perhaps pause there and maybe Angela and, and Polly, you can each in turn talk a bit more about uh, your particular uh, interests, Angela, music, and okay. Polly to talk a bit about creative arts and industries. And we can then, perhaps Polly and I as art historians can then uh, expand a bit more about what's special about the SOAS approach mm -hmm. to music, history of arts, the creative arts and cultural industries, to give uh, you all a sense of, of why SOAS is really a special place to come and why it's such an exciting place to be an undergraduate studying these subjects. So Angela, first of all, so yeah, the BA in music, in yes, BA thank you. you. Thanks, Christmas. Um, the BA in music is, um, uh, I think, very, very unique for music programs in the in the UK. And very often, or most often, a music program in the UK would entail quite a, a heavy load of Western classical music, um, and perhaps one or two subjects that have to do with music from other parts of the world. What we are offering is music uh, are courses that have to do exclusively from Asia, um, Africa, and the Middle East. And here you can you 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 do it alongside um, an, another specialism. So many of our students who register for the BA music will take a language. So a very popular combination will be BA music in Korean or in Chinese. Um, but as Crispin was saying. Some some of our students do social anthropology um, and then many of them um, will do music with another arts uh, uh, specialism um, and that is quite unique as, as I understand it. Um, um, the music courses that are offered within that degree are absolutely um, is so exciting and we have a wide range. In your first year you will be doing a subject called sounds and cultures, all the first years do that and we take you through our regions, the musical regions that we offer at SOAS. So you do section on, um, on um, say, West Africa, some music from East Africa, even um, some from North Africa. We, we had some fantastic uh, musicians come in this year to, to talk about music from Morocco and Algeria. Um, you don't just learn about it, but they bring in the instruments. You learn to play the rhythms. You might even be asked to stand up and dance a bit so that you really feel the music. Uh, but then also, of course, music from South Asia, from China, and from other parts of the world. Um, you you proceed then to do uh, area specialisms. So there are two, if you're interested in music in Cuba, music, sacred music from South Asia. Um, at the moment, I'm teaching a course on music of the Indian Ocean. Um, you have an option for a wide range of options for those, those area specialisms. And then we have more broader theoretical uh, subjects. We look at global pop um, and the decolonizing of global pop. So when we talk about global pop, we don't talk about it only in the European or Western sense, but we look at K-pop um, and it's, re uh, it's, it's reference to um, or its relevance to uh, kind of global music industry. We'll look at uh, South Sudan, South Sudanese hip hop, um, and again, its connection to the hip hop, the global hip hop scene. Um, we do music and gender. We also do skills based courses. So, if you want to do some sound recording, if you want to do podcast or radio production, you learn some of those skills. So, there's a wide range, and then all alongside that, you 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 select courses from your your second specialism, so from anthropology or from, from the arts. So that's basically it. A wide range of options um, and uh, um, very much an experience of discovering the world of music. Okay. And Polly, what's special about you know, our BA Creative Arts and Cultural Industries? Yeah, so this, this BA programme, we're, we're incredibly excited about it. It's, um, it's a relatively new programme. 
And it's really the first one in the country that allows you to study all, all the arts of, of Asia and Africa. Um, so if you're interested in history of art, but you're also interested in music, or you're also interested in film, and you don't want to choose just one, then it's a wonderful option because it allows you to combine all of these disciplines. Um, so there's a, a good range of choice within this, within this degree structure. Um, and in your first year, you will study history of art, you'll study kind of introductions to history of art, but also to film, um, thinking about, you know, the films of Asia and Africa, and also to music, some of the, some of the modules that Angela's describing. Um, you will also have access to those, including the, the possibility or the option of, of doing practice-based um, music training, if you wanted to do that. Um, so it's um, in the second year, you then get to, to specialize a little bit more. Um, and really one of the things that's special about this degree is that it allows you to combine the theory and, and history of you know, the arts in, in this sort of quite global context um, with quite practice-based skills. So it, allow, it gives you training in curatorial practice, for example, in museology, um, as, as well as in, in music and things like podcast um, production or, or, you know, filmmaking, all of these things you can you can study within the context of this degree. And so really, that gives you a wonderfully rounded um, degree structure, if you like, because it prepares you for, um, you know, the, the career path that you will, you will, you, you will choose afterwards. Um, but it also gives you this incredibly kind of engaging intellectual background. So um, it's a very exciting degree. I wish it had been around when I was, when mm -hmm. I was uh, looking Chris, for a degree. Chris, can I just jump in there? I left out a very, very important yes, uh, side about both the music degree, but also the creative arts degree, and that is performance. Um, and we offer a very, very wide range of, of instrumental study from gamelan to kora to uh, West African drums to a whole range of different um, East Asian and South Asian instruments. And that is a very, very dynamic part of, of, of the School of Arts. We have concerts, we have uh, guest lecturers, we have master classes, um, we have a, a very active uh, performance to group uh, aspect to the, the program. So. And indeed, it makes the, the School of Arts a bit noisier than some other parts. <laughs> in a rather wonderful way with, with uh, some of our students, you know, performing what they're learning. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to the, the, the degrees in history of art, well, I mean, history of art is a part of the creative arts and cultural industries uh, uh, degree, as Polly says, but you can also study it on its own. Um, history of art is, you know, it's a very broad ranging subject. You know, it's not simply about, you know, as we've already sort of suggested it, just about studying objects in, in their isolation. It's about thinking about the production of objects, the way in which they're used by people. It's about engaging with the sort of the, the politics of objects and their circulation. And so in the first year at SOAS, it's it offers a thorough grounding in the history of art more broadly as a discipline by looking at the connected histories of, of Asia and Africa through the study of objects. How can we understand the production and use of objects across Asia and Africa? Uh, how can we study the history of Asia and Africa, but do it through the study of objects, through the study of material and visual culture? We might want to look at the objects themselves and in another aspect of the, the first year uh, course, there is um, a, a module on uh, media and technologies of art, looking at how if we think about the, the types of materials and media from which objects are used, what impact does that have on the way in which they're used and with which they're circulated? Whether it's thinking about uh, the history of printing technology, which predates the use of printing uh, in Asia, uh, the use of printing as a technology for the circulation of, of manuscripts predates the uh, printing technology in the West by numerous centuries. That's an example of the way in which taking a, a, another approach to, to media and technology, we, we see that uh, from an Asian or African perspective, you know, there are different answers to when was printing first developed, for example. We might also want to look 
uh, and in another module that in the first year, there's a module on the spaces of art. So thinking about the, the places in which art has been produced and used, whether that's in a, a religious space, a temple, a mosque, or the role of the arts in courtly or palace environments in uh, the Middle East or Asia. We might want to then look at the ways in which these objects are used and consumed and seen in a religious or, or, or courtly or domestic context in Asia and Africa. And then think about what happens to an object if you think about an object in terms of its biography, in terms of its movement from one environment to another. What's the role of the museum, whether a colonial museum, or the modern art market in the construction of meaning for objects. This is again where you know, the, the politics of the arts comes in. We might want to also want to engage with uh, not just the spaces of art in terms of objects circulating within them, but those spaces themselves, be they buildings or cities or landscapes, the way in which uh, looking at uh, architecture, the architecture of museums, the architecture of religious buildings in Asia and Africa have become central elements in uh, the contemporary heritage industry uh, in these regions. The role of heritage institutions in, de in deciding what is worth saving, preserving, conserving, and what is of importance or of lesser significance. These are all important political issues that affect people's lives and how they see themselves and how they are seen by others. In the later parts of the degree at SIAS in, in History of Art, you can go on if you, if you were particularly engaged, as many of our students are, by the arts of Africa. You can go on to study the arts of this vast and diverse region in more detail whether they are historic arts or more uh, modern and contemporary arts or the arts of the peoples of the diasporas from these regions. So you can study, uh, go on and study in more detail um, aspects of African art or Japanese art or Chinese ceramics or Indian painting or Southeast Asian Buddhist art, for example. You know, for many of these subjects, there isn't anywhere else in Britain where you can study these things. Another aspect more broadly in, in the later years of our degree is thinking uh, about the arts more broadly, thinking about the cultural industries, thinking about the role of museums and in the collection and display of objects in, in these new environments. And so in the second year in our history of art degree and indeed for the creative arts and cultural industries students, uh, they study the sort of the history of museums, the histories of collecting, how have certain objects moved from one environment to another. And this also is an aspect of thinking about, as Angela indicated at the beginning, thinking about the decolonization of knowledge, thinking about the, the ways in which our knowledge of the arts has been constructed from certain perspectives and how these are vitally important issues today in, in how we can decolonize that knowledge and, and face up, particularly perhaps from London as a formal imperial capital, to facing up to the fact that so much uh, Asian and African art now lies in, in Britain, British museums. How did it get here? How did it arrive? How is it understood? How has it been displayed? These are all the critical issues for the study of the arts, but also critical issues for the study uh, by, by our students at science. It's tremendously exciting. I mean, London is a terrific place to study Asia and Africa mm -hmm. uh, because it's a global city. It's a global artistic center. It's a tremendously vital place. And indeed, SOAS itself, thinking about museums and displays and, and contemporary arts, SOAS has its own gallery, the Brunei Gallery, where exhibitions of Asian and African art and photography and other uh, visual media are regularly displayed throughout the year. 
that bring people from across Britain to London, to SOAS, to the gallery, and also from elsewhere in Europe. It's we're very close to the British Museum, which is just around the corner, which is a tremendous asset for, for the art historians amongst us, because it means we can just be in a classroom talking about, uh, for example, myself talking about some works of Indian sculpture. And I can show people pictures of it, but then and I can perhaps show them a film of these uh, objects being uh, consumed and used in a religious context in India. But then I can go around to the British Museum and look at the objects themselves in all their three-dimensional magnificence, that it's such a magnificent resource to have close by. So it really is uh, a sort of a global hub with its spokes reaching out across the world to Asia and Africa. So I think that's, I hope that's given you some sense of, of really why the School of Arts and why studying history of art, the creative arts and cultural industries and music at SOAS is really special. Another thing I'd mention about SOAS, of course, is that it is a specialist centre for the study of Asia and Africa. And the study of Asia and Africa often includes, you know, other aspects of, of culture, including, for example, languages. Many uh, Asian and African languages can be studied at SOAS that cannot be studied anywhere else in Europe. Um, we offer uh, degrees in Chinese, in Arabic, in Japanese. These are languages that we may be able to study at, at other universities in Britain. But we also offer degrees in the study of languages that you can't study elsewhere in, in Europe, including African languages, uh, including uh, Swahili, uh, for example, as well as uh, uh, other Asian languages, uh, including Vietnamese and Indonesian and Persian and Hebrew, as well as uh, more known. Now, what I must also emphasize here, if you are interested in, in languages, is that you can study our degrees as a joint degree with the language. You can study music and Korean, as Angela said. But if you're not sure about the language, and you're not sure or perhaps are not confident that you want to have a whole half of your degree in a language, you can still, and SOAS encourages this, we want our students to, to uh, learn a bit of the languages of Asia Africa, and Europe, that even if you're studying the BA History of Art, uh, there is still the option to do uh, some modules in a language. And if you get on with it, if you love it, you can take it further. So SOAS is a tremendously exciting place and indeed many of our graduates go on into uh, really exciting occupations, not just in Britain but elsewhere in Europe and indeed globally. And indeed SOAS both studies the world but also our students come across the globe. So SOAS itself is a very international uh, centre with a tremendously uh, diverse uh, student body uh, in one of the world's great uh, global cosmopolitan cities. Angela, Polly, <laughs> you know, where do our graduates go on? What do they take from SOAS mm -hmm. out into the world, into the occupations they go on to do elsewhere? Mm -hmm. Angela. Well, um, first of all, to say, uh, and picking up on the idea of London being a global city, um, our students come from all over the world. So it's, 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 it's particularly fascinating to see what they get from SOAS and how they take those skills back to their home areas and how they develop careers there. Um, and there is a very wide range of careers. So amongst our students, so, and, and the other thing is that they take their profession, they take their networks with them. So the, the, the relationships that they develop at SOAS often become really important professional networks that they take into their lives um, beyond SOAS. And it's, it's so exciting to watch that. So amongst the careers that our undergraduates have developed, Many of them have gone on to become very well-known performers. So performance is one of the big aspects of that. We're watching uh, a number of them at, quite at the moment, uh, one developing a very, very exciting career for herself in France. She's from there, um, becoming quite a global name. We watch them going back into the Middle East and developing a name for themselves there, having developed a skill in playing oud. Um, so performance, composition and production at various levels, developing their skills in sound production, 
and at SOAS and then going home and, and building that. Some of that, them use product, their production skills in, um, um, in theater, in film, in television. And what they're taking with them is not just the skill, but the knowledge of different musical forms and different sound and aesthetic practices into creating much more sensitive production um, productions at the end of the day. Uh, many of our teach uh, students go into teaching or into community music um, making, which is working with choirs, uh, community choirs, or working with music in hospitals, um, in, um, um, in care homes, in some of them even in palliative of care. So taking their, their musical skills into uh, community environments, um, again, where their knowledge of uh, multicultural music making becomes extremely important. Um, some of our undergraduates go on uh, to study music therapy, um, which requires um, a, a, a another degree on top of a music degree. But what we're seeing, and I'm, 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 I'm keeping close tabs on this, is that they're helping to develop the whole field of music therapy, which was based very much on a Western framework of what sound means. They're bringing in a much more multicultural, uh, global understanding of the meaning of sound um, and opening up the field of music therapy in all kinds of ways. So we're seeing the development of what is called community music therapy, which is not only the medicalized idea of music, music helping to uh, with people with autism or certain kinds of disabilities, but music helping with whole communities that maybe have been damaged by war or by gang, gang um, involvement or some kind of trauma. Um, so the music and health issue is quite a big trajectory for some of our students. Uh, many of our undergraduate students go on to do master's degrees, they might be interested in academia, and what we do do a lot of in our undergraduate degree is teach research methods, is encourage our students to go out and do research. Um, so these are students who are interested in writing and in developing more of an academic uh, 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 career for themselves. Some go into charities, into NGOs, um, or into international uh, development field that's very very exciting um, and again working with refugees working with migrants bringing their musical knowledge so that an, um, a field that is very technocratic is very numbers orientated can be uh, a kind of reconstructed through a much more human element of using music as a way to find out who people are and what their aspirations are um, we have a number of students who are very interested in broadcasting and in media. And so we do run it, as Polly was suggesting, we have courses in podcasting. We have one wonderful course on presenting world music for radio. So for some broadcasting, radio and television is a very um, exciting area to go into. And again, a multicultural musical understanding really adds something to, to, that, uh, to their ability to develop radio for a much wider public. Um, and then one other area that is uh, where we see a lot of our SOAS students going into is into sound archiving. Um, Crispin mentioned our interest in heritage. Um, the British Library is very close to SOAS. Almost the entire sound archive at the British Library is um, populated by ex SOAS, wow, well, SOAS graduates. Um, and these are people who are interested in histories of musical collection and using old musical uh, uh, collections as a way to repatriate, taking them back to the communities to whom um, they belong, um, where, developing ways to sort of reactivate the archive so that they are not just uh, recordings in the library, but they're recordings about people's stories, their histories. And that also leads into an interest in uh, music journalism. So, for instance, one of our main music uh, um, uh, magazines out there called Songlines, um, the main editor is a SOAS graduate, um, and many of the people who write for the magazine come from SOAS. So that's just a sample. Um, but as I started out by saying, is, as, as kind of diverse our student body is, um, is representing the kind of diversity of their uh, career interests and capabilities. Um, so come and join us and develop yeah. your career through us. <laughs> Thank you, Angela. Mm -hmm. Polly, just briefly, just some examples of where SOAS graduates have gone on to, and then and then we'll have some time for, for questions, questions, which you can yeah. either post in the chat or, or just uh, speak up. So Polly, just briefly, a few examples of graduate outcomes. What are, mm. what, what are the sort of skills that our SOAS students take out into the world mm. uh, in, in their occup later occupations? Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, often SOAS students or SOAS graduates find that they're, they're really quite in demand because um, 
you know, there's really been a, a kind of boom in, in interest in a sort of much more global approach to the arts. So particularly in contemporary art, but also in terms of museology, it's a really kind of critical moment for museums and for the arts. Um, a moment when there's really a demand to, to take a much more global approach. And so whilst many degree programmes don't produce students with that kind of global approach, of course, SOAS is producing these students and what they find when they're in, in, in the market is that really they have, you know, a, an excellent kind of range of choices available to them just because, you know, there's so few people trained, um, you know, with these specific yeah. skills and knowledges. Um, so our students, I mean, they will be trained. So a, a student um, who takes the creative arts and, and cultural industries degree, for example, um, will be trained in, in this very broad range of skills um, that Angela has outlined some of, but also skills in, in curating and museology um, and skills in, in filmmaking and analyzing and, and creating film as well. Um, so that really opens up a, a vast sort of array of options for, for our students. Um, uh, those um, are history of art students um, tend to go into curatorial positions. So there's been, you know, many of our, our alumni are in, you know, institutions around the world um, in, in curatorial positions, in museological positions. Um, but also students, you know, go into um, into other aspects of the arts. So they might, many of them go on to have um, further academic careers. They come back for, for doctoral, the doctoral programs and go on to have academic careers. Some of them go into publishing, into NGOs again, um, perhaps into journalism um, and, and these kind of things. So yeah, I mean, it really does open up an incredibly wide um, kind of range of, of career paths um, beyond curating. Curating seems the obvious one, but there's there's many more beyond that as well. And there's many aspects of, of curating. So um, some students might go on, for example, to do um, uh, arts education. So um, uh, working within galleries and museums in, in education roles, so working with schools and community groups. Um, they might go into conservation, they might go into um, perhaps press and marketing, which can be actually a really interesting path, um, mm -hmm. path to take. So yeah, there are many, many different options and uh, we're very proud of our alumni. They've gone mm -hmm. on to do all yeah. sorts of exciting things. Yeah, very much indeed. I think the three of us have, have talked an awful lot um, mm -hmm. and really we, sh we want to hear from you. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, post them in the chat or, or just um, turn your microphone on, turn your camera on and uh, ask us anything directly, anything to do with uh, any of the issues we've raised today or any, any questions you might have of our degrees or, or SOA specifically. I might also just uh, point out um, my colleague has reminded us that this uh, session's been recorded, just to mention that as well. So. Mm. And just to just to interrupt um, Crispin as well, sorry, um, if you would like to ask a question, um, you can raise your hand and then I can unmute you as well. So please do that if you'd like to ask a question out loud or you can use the Q&A chat box as well. And I've also uh, put our email addresses up here. So if there's anything you want to know or want to, to raise with uh, any one or all of us afterwards, or if you just want some more information about anything to do with the degree, uh, the degrees on offer in the School of Arts and Science, please get in touch. We're delighted to hear from people and always uh, happy to answer your questions and point you in the direction of uh, further information. So, Crispin, there's, a, there's a, a question here from Anu about whether the performance aspect of the music BA is mandatory. Um, in your first year, it is. Um, in the first year, what we do is we offer you, um, uh, it's about five weeks, um, se segments of different instruments. We just take you through our world of music by offering uh, a section on gamelan, a section on kora, a section on tabla from South Asia, and, and a section on um, um, Iranian music. Music. So that is the only do, the, uh, performance course that you do do as, as a compulsory course in the music. But from, from second year onwards, uh, you, you can opt to take performance or to take something else. You're not, it's not obligatory. It may be worth adding that um, if you wanted to study music, so you wanted to study ethnic ethnomusicology and, and history and theory of music, but you didn't want to do the practice based element, then you could go through the creative, creative arts, arts industries, and then yeah. that's possible to, to do that, then, then the performance option is, is optional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Thank you, Anu. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, there were some other questions coming in. Um, uh, Hannah, you have a question for combined East Asian studies. How much history and art will be uh, in the course? I mean, in terms of joint degrees, it's, it's half and half. Um, so you do 50% East Asian studies and 50% history of art. The history of art, if you do a joint degree with, uh, and you have particular regional interests, such as East Asian studies, uh, the initial history of art in the first year will be the history of art or in Asia and Africa more broadly, rather than specifically uh, East Asia. But as you go through the degree, there are uh, more chances to do specialist uh, uh, sort of sort of emphasize certain regions to a certain extent but you'll come out with a sort of a broad art history degree even with some uh, regional specialism so I hope that gives you some sense a lot of the things about the degree structure and more detail are available on the website so can you can probably sort of uh, get uh, something from there um, another question for the BA creative arts do you have to have a portfolio art background I think the answer there is um, the BA Creative Arts and Cultural Industries, we're, we're not teaching the fine art, we're, we're not uh, doing it, the, we're studying the arts in terms of, of uh, the produced object, but also the environments and they're produced and consumed. So if you're interested in fine arts and creative practice, um, we're not the right institution for you. Um, with the exception of performance in, in music. Mm -hmm. So you don't need uh, an art background. Many of our students don't have an art background. If they have studied art at school, fine art, that's often great because it means they bring a sensibility of, of making and producing to the ways in which they interpret. But many of our students uh, only discover history of art as a discipline, having studied um, the humanities more broadly, whether sort of English or, or languages or, or history uh, prior to this, and then just realize that there are other ways of exploring language, literature, culture, uh, art, history, by thinking about these subjects in terms of, in terms of objects. It might be worth adding to that, Crispin, that, well, you know, of course you're absolutely right that um, this degree program is not practice based and it's not, you know, we don't have studios, so it's not, you know, a studio practice based degree. Um, but at the same time, there is the possibility within this degree to have quite creative um, uh, assessments. So yeah. there is the yeah. option within that. So, for example, um, some modules will ask you to produce um, a podcast uh, rather than an essay. We have a student at the moment who's uh, looking to present for his final thesis part of it will be a graphic novel, for example. So, you know, there, there are certainly, you know, options within these degree programs or specifically with, within creative arts and cultural industries to do more, um, you know, alternative forms of, of, of assessment. Um, Indeed. And we're very keen on, on alternative forms of assess assessment, recognizing that there are many different ways of, of presenting uh, one's knowledge and understanding of these things it you know we've talked about oral and oral transmission of knowledge which well we're, we're doing now in a way but also in the way in which uh, we evaluate students work and we encourage uh elements of that creativity in uh written and spoken and visual form uh, there's a question in the chat box how does it work the year abroad in case of four-year degrees is anyone, could either of you answer that? Um, uh, particularly for, well, if you're studying uh, a degree uh, which includes a language, um, uh, this uh, often includes a year abroad in the third year, so mm. the third out of four years. So if you're studying uh, history of art with Korean, uh, the third year will be in Korea. Uh, studying Korean, being immersed in, in Korean culture and language. Um, some students uh, opt for that four-year degree, we're doing the language. Uh, some uh, opt for uh, an alternative three-year degree, which may include a language but doesn't have the year abroad. So that's uh, in terms of the, the art history part of it, 
are there elements of another question has just come in uh, are there elements of art thought as part of the language course if you're studying Japanese alone then you may be able to do options in East Asian art within that degree uh, but if you're studying Japanese as a degree that's hosted by another department uh, not not from the School of Arts so from from the School of Arts you can go out as it were within SOAS to another department to do uh, either half your degree or just modules of your degree in a language uh, but that's always combined with what we're doing in in our department so the, what I'd say in terms of the language is that there are different levels of language as part of a degree you can do a bit or a lot <laughs> so, uh, I'll just add something Chris, slightly from a side, and that is we have quite a few Japanese language students who join our music ensembles because we have a number of Japanese ensembles, in, including a, an Okinawa group. Um, these are ensembles that, um, that meet up on the weekends and, um, uh, and are very active. Uh, they, they often do performances um, outside. Um, so it's just something to add to your understanding of, of, language, of Japanese language and culture is actually learning to perform an instrument and performing with others. In terms of the year abroad, Marina, I'm asking about this. Um, mm -hmm. I'd also say about at the moment, the year abroad for SOAS students is focused on, on the language. It's, it's for students doing a whole degree or half their degree, which includes a specific language so that you, uh, those students go to that uh, host country to study. Um, off the top of my head, countries that you can go to uh, in the third year abroad to study the language include Japan, Korea, uh, China, mm -hmm. uh, Vietnam, uh, I think Indonesia now, uh, India, India. Um, in the Middle East, uh, you can do Arabic, Turkish and uh, Farsi, Persian abroad. And recently, they might be uh, Zanzibar for Swahili. And, and indeed now um, mm -hmm. Uh, to go to, um, uh, you can study Swahili in, mm. I think in Zanzibar or mm. I, I forget, this is new. Mm. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, great exciting options yeah. to, 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 to study abroad if you're doing the language. Mm -hmm. Any other questions about anything? You know, many of the questions about languages are, are, are best directed perhaps to the uh, the, the languages and cultures team that are perhaps doing uh, open day presentations straight after us at, at 11 or, or, or later today. Mm. Um, but we can certainly answer any questions to do with uh, art history and music and the creative arts and cultural industries now. Mm. I'm delighted so many people came this morning as yeah. well. It's, mm. I'm, I'm thrilled that so many people wanted to come along to this presentation. So thank you so much for coming. If you do have any more questions now, uh, or if you just think of it later, there's something you want to know, do get in touch. <laughs> okay. I think perhaps at two minutes to 11, we should all go and put the kettle on <laughs> and make a cup of tea. Thank you so much uh, to you all for coming. Uh, I hope you're excited by the possibility of studying at SOAS as much as we're excited uh, to be working and teaching at SOAS. It's a really special place with a lot of uh, special people and mm -hmm. that means ultimately the students. The students are what make it such an exciting, vibrant, brilliant place to be. Uh, so I look forward to welcoming you to SOAS in the future. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for coming. Thank